I love CFS. 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 I love CFS
Hello and welcome back to CFS 2018 Crossfire Grand Final as we look to make history with our first ever non-Chinese world champion here for CFS. Right now, Black Dragons are 2-0 up. RU Legends have had their two biggest defeats of the entire CFS 2018 competition and they've occurred to them in the Grand Final. Things are not looking good. Yeah, definitely not. I mean, they're just sort of faltering under the pressure here. They haven't had any response to this aggressive play style being thrown at them. And looking at a map three, they have to have a huge amount of changes in order to have any success here. Thankfully, they've been given a little bit of time again in between the maps. We haven't gone directly into one of the maps after we've closed out the other one. So Arya Legends have had, you know, five or so minutes in between yeah. each map to try and re-strategize. But the question at the end of the day is, is that enough? Are they still coming up with a better plan to try and make up for this? They were able to make that last map closer, but at the end of the day, momentum still swings incredibly heavily in the favor of Black Dragons. And a lot of it's just coming down to raw aim. The ability to take 1v1 battles at the end of the day, with Black Dragons are doing it in a way that I don't think we've ever seen before. And it's something that I don't know if RU Legends are going to be able to figure out within the course of this series. As we take a look at the RU Legends lineup, we saw them, they did walk out of the booth during the break. They did take a breather, get some space, go for a bit of a walk. It's what you probably need to do to try and find your head. But the real question is, what can you do in five minutes? How much can you bring it back? Ladies and gentlemen, this could be our third and final map at CFS 2018. Are you legends? Up against Black Dragons, we head to Ankara. And so with two incredibly dominant maps gone the way of the Black Dragons, we go into our third map and possibly our final map in Ankara. And unsurprisingly, things have already gone the way of Black Dragons to start, but will they stay that way? Drace is now RU Legends start on the attacking side, has traded that opening kill back, and whoa, Will along with Knotson both pick up kills to put it right back under the control of the Black Dragons. Vase will find one there. It's going to be a three on two now. Drace taking a lot of damage in that fight, but already Root Legends starting to fall in their footsteps, of having struggles time and time again here to hold these post plants. 2v1 situation now. Will Vase be able to hold on here? It would be four kills in the opening round needed to make it happen. Gets a little dink there onto Vienna, almost takes him down and out. It's going to be a lot of pressure on Anatsen here. Gets the spot, but is lit up as well. Only 16 seconds. This is winnable now for Vase here. Spots both players, but they peek together. They get the timing, and that's how you get the job done there. One to zero. Black Dragons now just nine away from being champions. Nearly faltering in that 1v2, however, at the end of the day. A little bit worrisome for Black Dragons, but still controlled it. And once again, that's the point I've been really driving home in this matchup. When it comes down to the raw aim duels, when it comes down to the clutch, Black Dragons are winning almost every single engagement. And that is something that RU Legends can't correct with a pause. It's something that these players have to fix on an individual level, and they need to do it incredibly quickly. And I'm just not sure if they're going to have enough time to figure that out. Regardless, though, into the second round we go. RU Legends throwing a little bit of pressure towards the B site at start, but keeping their options open, of course. Wanting to play, obviously, a little bit more of a passive play style compared to the Black Dragons, but Black Dragons may not even let that happen, considering how dominant they've been, even on their, even on their global risk side. They've still been playing an incredibly aggressive game here on all three of our maps. Black Dragons having a lot of control over towards the B bomb site here as well. A lot of forward pushes and aggression to start off the round, but no frags out of it just yet, Will. May have some trouble in mid here if they do go for the full commitment here. But right now, Rue Legends seeming to be very unsure of themselves in this situation. They don't seem to know where they want to go just yet. And rightfully so. They've had a lot of mistakes in this match so far. They really don't want any more in front of them if they want any hopes of taking this third map and potentially starting to claw back into the series. But right now, ADRF, such a key player in the series, is going to run into trouble. But he actually comes out of it on top here, finds the first, but not the second. Treak. Able to trade that one out, but Vase taking a lot of damage as well before he does finally go down. So it's even to start, but RU Legends also taking a little bit of additional damage. Vase specifically going down to about 20 HP. 
And another one of the members of RU Legends also getting hit pretty heavily from that exchange too. The Black Dragon's probably happy with the result that they've come out of that fight with, or at least they will be once they realize how low some of these players are. It's the A site that seems to be the battlefield for the upcoming engagement now. It looks like RU Legends are gonna try to sneak through the side tunnel. The flash to the inside connects pretty confidently and that's gonna give Excure along with the other member of RU Legends the room they need, or at least it would seem so. Push up the steps, but no! Danimal shuts down both of those players and a third from him as well. Bring it all down to Vice who will get knocked out by Will. Black Dragons dominating once again at a 2-0 start. And this is looking like the potential beginning of the end here. Black Dragons doing what they do best and not showing any fear in this entire matchup so far. Just steamrolling their way round after round, not afraid, not afraid to swing wide or just peek out aggressively here in these matchups. These aim duels just going consistently in their favor. And Rue Legends still not able to respond. Will gets the opener as well. And he's gonna be hunting for more here now. Some potential players that he could frag here outside of A. Long Treak and Excure both nearby, but Will, he will back off here. Wait for the re-engage. Drace though. About to peek it here, but right now, Rue Legends again have to find the opening, but it's going to be Trink who finds one, takes down Danimal, and there is some hope after all. Will goes down as well to Drace, and now it's going to be a three on four for the execution. Side tunnel won't necessarily be the easiest route for RU Legends to take, though, if they want to go for the execute, because Vienna holds position on the inside. He'll find one, pushes back in to try and find more, but Excure shuts that down. Knotson, in the meanwhile, works his way to the outside of the A site. Won't be able to find much, and Excure will shut down one of the last players for the Black Dragons. Falls to one man left, and he's unable to do it. So once again, we do see RU Legends getting themselves onto the board earlier and earlier. It was 5-1 in the first map, I believe 3-1 on the previous map, and now 2-1 here. Right now, though, they cannot afford to slow down. A very shaky round for both teams. Rue Legends, they do walk away with it, but they need even more than that to get momentum on their side again. Will taken down early after the nice trade there from Excure. Still 4v4 even numbers across the board here. Treat already taking some damage. Stray able to find one, but the trades come through once again as Drace will go down alongside Vase in this round. It is going to be Black Dragons now looking for the full retake, though. Three on three situation. The bomb going to be planted by Excure. Black Dragons, though, already collapsing in on their positions. Treek, though, has a chance to catch them off guard here. Vienna could run into trouble here. Treek, not able to connect the shot, though. That's one you cannot afford to miss. And right now, Rue Legends have to try and hold on with just the two players they have left. Skewer, though, very low for this one. Down to a two versus two. However, RU Legends have the read on the retake. They know the angle it's coming from. That might not stop it, though. Down into a 1v1 now. Time getting low. Danimal has to make the move. As Stray's certainly not going to do it. The young gun will fall in the clutch. But is there enough time left? I think there is. Wait and see for the exact result of the round. Looks like BD got it. Oh, yes, they should be able to sneak off this diffuse just barely. And with that, they'll put themselves up to 3 1. And again, they walk away with another round. They should have been able to win Treak, having a bit of a history of whiffing the important shots when he needs to. We saw he had an earlier match where he did have an important, crucial pick that he fell to as well. But this time around, Black Dragons right now on top already once again. Vienna gets the opening pick, Treak falls. And it's a five on four to start off round number five. Once again, it's going to be RU Legends looking to make impact early on, but it won't happen. ADRF, who's been the star for Black Dragons throughout most of this series, picks up an early double kill. And with the additional third frag that was also found, it's left it down once again to a 2v4 against RU Legends' favor. Excure and Vase looking to somehow try and close this round out for the Russians. We'll see if they can make it happen here, though. RU Legends needing some huge steps forward to take this one back into their control. Already down 2-0 in the series, 3-1 on the map, and Danimal continues to rein in from above here on the top of A, Vase alone, trying to make this impact, but it's not gonna happen. Danimal finds himself another frag in the round to finish this one off. 4-1 now on the board, Black Dragons slowly but surely closing their way on a championship of their own. And right now, Rue Legends still have no answers for them. Sorry for the Rue Legends. It's high time they start working their way back into this map as they need to do it incredibly quickly. Black Dragons already in that dominating scoreline that we've seen them control back on Black Widow, back on our previous maps as well. And it shows no signs of slowing down. Even though they're on the defense right now, they continue to play aggressively. They continue to press the envelope against RU Legends attacks. And for the most part, it's always worked. 
Black Dragons, though, set up nicely here on the A connector. A lot of pressure, though, comes in from Rue Legends, and Drace gets both kills and shuts this one down. Finally, looking like a clean round, Drace finds himself a third kill still, and he's not done yet. Going to survive the fight with just a little bit of HP to work with. Not in an ADRF, though, already on the flank here. Look at this positioning, ADRF. So Sneaky here finds the opener, looking for more, but there's nobody else left as the rest of the players of Rue Legends have worked their way over towards the B bomb site here. Full execution, clean entry, no players on the bomb site just yet. Black Dragons, though, now look at a 2v4 retake. A very difficult situation to get out of, but already leading 4-1 to could give them that extra bit of confidence here. ADRF already finds one to open things up. Drace very low from his initial triple kill as well, so there's a lot of opportunities here Four Black Dragons still to work their way in, but it's not gonna happen just yet. Stray takes down one, and it's all on ADRF. Could he be the hero once again? Finds himself a pick, but that's it. Drace, a big round from him here. Four kills, and Rue Legends still trying to keep the dream alive in this one. Unfortunately, a 2v4 having to start from pretty much the exact opposite side of the map from where the bomb is going down. I think that's just asking a little bit too much out of the Black Dragons roster. But even so, they are incredibly close to at least starting it off, and we're down to two members remaining at the end of the round for RUL. So. Even the victories from RUL have some bad sides to it as they just barely are able to hold on and close out that four versus two as it was brought down to an even 2v2 at the end of it. And as we can see, it is going to be Rue Legends working their way over towards the A bomb site. Only one lurk here over towards B to cut off any sort of flank that could occur. Right now though, Black Dragons relying on knots in here, the anchor on this A bomb site for the initial peak here. Looking to potentially contest from Vents, but Treek, so nervous in this situation, just wants to back off and completely reset. And this is where Rude Legends may start to struggle. They have no confidence in the aim duels they're trying to take here. They go for the initial peak, but then they just immediately back off, almost scared here in the process. And it's that dominating control that I think Black Dragons was looking to assert at the beginning of this series, and they've done that. They've got RU Legends' number. They've really been able to restrict their potential execute capability as a result of that. Since as you mentioned, there's just no confidence in a lot of these peaks. Initial peak goes out, Treek will get legged as a result of it. He's not gonna be fully knocked out just yet though. Obviously he's gonna have some trouble making any more aggressive play for the rest of this round. Once again, we've got aggressive movement coming out from ADRF. Could potentially just immediately flank onto some of the members of RU Legends in mid. ADRF back to spot one, he was spotted two though, but it doesn't matter. Puts two kills up onto the board, gets some support from Will in the process. Drace will be able to find one pick in his own regard, and the pre-fire coming in from Drace nets him a second. Vienna now gonna be pressured, but no, it's Knotson instead to shut everything down, putting us into a 3v1 with Excure, looking to clutch the 1v3. We'll see if he has anything in store for this to happen. A 1v3 would be huge for him right now. His team, surely in need of it, finds the opener here to try and make it happen. But the shutdown comes through. It's Vienna to find one and a round for his team once again. Black Dragons now getting closer and closer to the finish line here. It's going to be a 5-2 to two lead. Now halfway for them to get this done. So the Black Dragons sit closer and closer halfway through the map. Halfway to victory and halfway to that amazing trophy sitting center stage. And then what a dominating way to do it if they're going to continue to be able to control the situation. But it won't necessarily be a definitive case at the beginning of this round. A one for one exchange, as well as forcing another member of Black Dragons back, will take some heat. And he's forced around the corner to wait for the push through mid, should RU Legends decide to go for it. Right now, Black Dragons just trying to funnel them into mid here and see what they can do. No flank presence, though, so Rue Legends do have the opportunity here to rotate out and head back towards the B bomb site. They will leave Skewer there in mid, who actually finds the opening pick to try and get this take towards B started. Nicely done by him. Now Will and Vienna are down and out for the Black Dragons here in this round. Three on four. Still Black Dragons with some key players alive, though. ADRF and Danimal, who have been quite unstoppable so far in this half. The rest of the Black Dragons, we are going to see their players still split up, and that could be problematic. Are you led to a very conjoined push moving in right now? ADRF is able to survive the onslaught on the site. And Stray will also move in to try to cut off ADRF, but no luck. His movement's certainly quick, that's for sure. But he will finally be found trying to escape through the connector. Not much of a hope, unfortunately, again in this 2v4 that's going to be set against with Knotts and N Danimal from the Black Dragons. But we'll see if they can at least put a few kills together. Try to inch close to it, as we saw on a previous round. The Black Dragons were up against that same scenario. 2v4 now, Danimal and Knotson. No time to make this happen. 15 seconds, they have to do something, and they have to do it very quickly here. Knotson finds one, but that will be it. Root Legends, they do pick up a key round here to try and keep themselves alive on this map. 
a little bit closer than what we've seen from them in the past. Potentially a 5-4 half if they play their cards right, but with Black Dragons out in front, they've still have, they still have to be careful. This shutdown is going to be even harder than they might think. So we are going to see RU Legends shift their players over towards another direct A take. They've got the walk up through long pretty quickly. And for the Black Dragons, well, we've seen their aggression come out once again too from the B long position. It is going to be their number four player trying to move out. I believe that's ADRF once again on hunting for a potential flank against the members of RU Legends, but instead it's going to be a faster paced execute coming in from RU Legends onto the site. Knotson holds against the first kill. Danimal's going to be up against the steps though, and it's over aggressive from him. Vice along with Stray able to trade out both of those kills. We quickly see the rest of Black Dragons trying to pounce onto the site as we're into a 3v4 retake for the Black Dragons. Now this is a round that Rue Legends should be able to hold on to in theory, but Black Dragons seeing that light at the end of the tunnel could prove to be more difficult than Rue Legends may anticipate here on the retake. Will, ADRF, and Vienna all alive to try and make this happen. Vase playing on the arch side here, trying to catch them. Treek finds the first. The retake slowly getting shut down here. Will and ADRF still trying to find the openings here, but Will goes down. It's all on ADRF here, 1v4, 13 seconds, no time to make this happen. The trades come through and Rue Legends actually make this a very close half here, five to four. Black Dragons still gonna be leading at the half, but a much better half from Rue Legends coming out here. Certainly the case, it does seem like they broke that momentum where we were seeing Black Dragons just shut down every single engagement. That's no longer the case. RU Legends have learned to fight. Now they need to learn to win. They're just one more round away from tying this map up at five to five. And then Potentially even for the first time in this entire series, taking the lead over the Black Dragons to maybe, just maybe, put a map onto the board for the Russians here. So that they don't leave this final empty-handed. This is where they really need to remain composed here and realize that it is not over till it's over. Rue Legends, you can tell they are still a bit stressed here because they haven't closed out a single map just yet. But this could be the start they need to reignite them back into this matchup. Right now, though, Black Dragons still sees the opportunity to close this one three to zero, commanding fashion in the grand finals. But right now, Rue Legends on the defense will see if they have what it takes to take things one step further into a map four and potentially a comeback situation here for themselves. It would be quite the comeback to mount though here as Black Dragons do not look like they can be slowed down, but Stray already in a key position here. Spots potentially the shoulder of a player there on the cross over towards A, has to back off and play for the retake positions. Nowhere in sight. The Rue Legends squad so far, they finally are able to send Vase over towards this position, but he's alone and has to hold this push off. Yeah, he's gonna be under a lot of pressure very quickly. He does have one of their teammates to support him, and so far he's doing his job well, but it's very quickly traded out into the favor of the Black Dragons once again, and we go down into a 4v3. Quite a few players have taken damage, but it does not seem to matter. Notson picking up multiple kills in the post plant situation, leaving it all an obscure and Treak to try and hold for RUL. We do see two kills actually picked up by them to even out the fight now. Down into a two versus two. Treak and Excure working their way back up and most importantly, no plant seen for the Black Dragons just yet. It's gonna be risky to do it now in this 2v2 situation. Danimal has control over it. We'll need to see him eventually put it on the ground. I think with over a minute left, they're not stressed for time, but he does now go for the commitment. In addition to this though, Treak has gone for a bit of a flank. We'll have to wait and see if Will's watching out. He's an incredibly low HP and no, he's not watching for it. The second kill is also picked up quickly by Excure. It's RU Legends. Do you trade out rounds enough to be able to tie this up at five to five at the beginning of the second half? And for the first time, you can see Black Dragons a little bit flustered after that one. They had the numbers advantage. They knew they should have been able to hold on, but Rue Legends, they may just have some fight left in them still here as they tie things up. And now they have the opportunity to pull ahead into the lead here on map number three. Black Dragons so in control of this series, but now for the first time, Rue Legends has shown us a sign that they may be able to take us back into this one with a potential map four if they continue forward strong here. Already though, Black Dragons, they're ready to bring that raw aggression back out, sending their full team over for this A execution, and rightfully so. They know that there's not a lot of players who tend to be immediately in response for this A bombsite execution. Stray having some trouble in the past round getting any entries. Vase only got one in the previous round as well. So Black Dragons, they go in once again here. Rue Legends this time around, no luck. ADRF, big shutdown coming through for him. Three on four situation now. Rue Legends looking to retake with the numbers down once again. And this time a lot less damage going on to the residual Black Dragons members as well. That made the RU Legends retaking the 2v2 a whole lot easier, especially considering that their flanked position caught one of the members of Black Dragons off guard. Now it's full HP for everyone left in the map right now. 
Well, all the players are real legends. Unfortunately, trying to force their way through this fence line, which has proved to be a very one-sided angle for the team that has control over the site. 2v1 in the trades, and Treak does not last long either. Black Dragons immediately go back into controlling this situation as they push ahead 6-5. to five. Four rounds separate them from the trophy. And that was actually an ace on the round from ADRF as well, just continuing his dominating performance here in the grand final. Surely one of the key players overall in this best of three so far, making things just seemingly flawless here for the Black Dragon squad. Right now, though, it's going to be a push out of long A from Root Legends. Caught off guard, though. It's going to be a trade two for one so far. Vienna trying to hold on with Danimal, but it's going to be Vase. A nice double kill to answer back. Three on two now. Will looking for the response here, but Vase smartly will back off out of this one. Excuer caught on the flank though. Will finds one. Danimal and Will looking to fight their way out of this, but Trace will take down Will. Danimal left in a 1v2 now to try and keep Black Dragons on top. Otherwise, it will be a tie once again. The trades the wing in the favor of Rue Legends here, but Danimal has something to say about that. Trace down to the 1v1 now against Danimal. Could be caught with his back turned though. Drace actually throws out a shot there, so now Danimal knows exactly where he is. He's gonna go in for the full flank here. Danimal working his way back around towards spawn. He's gonna try to make himself forward. We'll go to the clutch cam to take a look at this. See who will be able to come out on top. It's gonna be Drace stuck on the site. Just waiting for the eventual push to come from his opponent. He's got the right read on it right now. With over a minute left, there's a whole lot going through Drace's head. It could cause him to make a mistake at any moment. The same can be said for Danimal, however. But he controls the pace of this situation. Drace, up until this point, wasn't getting too aggressive. But now Drace looks like he wants to take the fight directly over towards Danimal. If he continues to head towards the spawn, it might play in his favor. Not the case, though. He'll work his way over into the mid-connector. And then eventually over towards B through the direct path here. Right, they'll meet each other in mid, and at the end of the day, it's going to be RU Legends that take control of another clutch as they tie us up again 6-6. Six to six. A map that's finally starting to look a bit positive for RU Legends, but still trading rounds back and forth. Not a safe way to secure it just yet. Black Dragons still ample time to respond here. We'll see if they make any adjustments right now. The past couple rounds, they've been trying to force their way A, but it hasn't been working. But Rue Legends getting counter aggressive here, pushing out B Long Will. He's going to grab the triple kill, shuts all of the players down outside of B Long. Huge way to open up the round for Black Dragons. And now Rue Legends are struggling to find a quick response here. But Will, he finds the fourth kill. He's not going to be done just yet. Shriek, the last alive now. A 1v5, surely not Will on the hunt for his ace opportunity here. He's going to be looking for Treek very quickly here. Treek caught in spawn. Will looking for the ace. Can't find it just yet. Treek down to just a sliver of HP and Will. He's going to get the ace. Beautiful round coming out from Will. And Black Dragons are reignited and potentially ready to cross that finish line. We've seen one from ADRF and now one from Will. Aces across the team here as Black Dragons just cannot be stopped. That's what you call a momentum breaker right there, getting single-handedly destroyed by a single member of the opposing team. How are RU Legends gonna come back from that? It looks like a question is how they're gonna make an attempt at it. Vienna with a good start, ADRF gets the follow-up, a double kill from him. He will be traded out as Excuer picks up a kill, but it's only a small gesture, and it's not even on ADRF. It's Will, the player that aced in the previous round that gets picked off here. Excuer to find two more, but Knutson finally putting him down, leads us into a 2v1 with Drace having to clutch. Now a lot of pressure onto Drace here. Actually does a lot of damage here outside of A-Long as well. Knotson though, will he get the kill? Not gonna happen though. ADRF very low, but comes on the flank. And Black Dragons, they will find yet another round here. Things looking better and better. Just now two rounds remain. It's all they need here to make it happen here. The championship dream, the first team outside of China to win a grand final here. Potentially Rue Legends if they continue forward. Danimal already starts it off on the right foot with the opening pick taking down Treek. So a 5v4 once again is the way the round will start off and it's no surprise that we see the Black Dragons picking up that opening kill. They've been incredibly dominant in this final and they've made it an incredibly quick final at that due to the incredibly fast paced play style we've seen on both their Blacklist and Global Risk sides. Will just around the corner here. We'll move in for another incredibly aggressive pick. An instant headshot pop from him. Leaves RU Legends with only three players standing here. Stray around the corner might meet his maker soon as Knotson actually is allowed to fall back. But another player from Black Dragons take contestion and Will finds yet another pickup, opening up a path to the B site if it's even really needed at this point. They're down to two on RU Legends. One stuck behind the big boxes just outside of the A site. 
going to be trying to hold on as now he's the last man standing. Will again single handedly dominating things. He's 10 to 3 on the half. We've barely even played that many rounds on this half so far. Sound of Vice though, at low HP in a 1v3 to try and somehow save RU Legends in this round. And it's looking like he's about to run directly into Danimal here in a second. He gets the spot, he finishes it off, and Black Dragons are on map, series, and tournament point. And this is what it all comes down to. Black Dragons, the championship in their eyes here. Three opportunities to close the series and secure themselves as the Crossfire Stars champions here at CFS 2018. Excure there. Going to run straight into trouble here. Finds the opener, but it's immediately traded. But Treek able to answer back with one of his own. 4v3 now, Will, Knotson, and Vienna looking to close this one for the Black Dragons. But Treek definitely trying to hold off this push. Black Dragons now will back up and potentially take this one over towards the A bomb site. Rue Legends already over rotating here over towards B, but Vienna, he just wants to go right into it, but it's not going to happen. Black Dragons, they're trying to force this one maybe a bit too quick here. Will will find himself in contestant in the second two. Will holds the line. Problem is just him and Knotson left in the fight. And RU Legends commit to the mid push to try and shut down that play before it can go any further. First of the three chances gone. RU Legends sustained. Two more for Black Dragons to shut it down before we end up in overtime. And now we'll see if they have what it takes. Black Dragons getting a little bit too overzealous to try and make this one happen for themselves. But again, we are going to see the aggression coming over towards this bomb site. But Drace has already found a nade kill here to get things started. Rue Legends potentially to try and take this one into overtime. Black Dragons again getting a little bit too aggressive for comfort here. Danimal though, a chance to open it up, but it's squandered here. Drace finally traded out, but Will once again, he could do this here. Two kills on the opening, but Stray is still able to trade, but ADRF right there, but it's not gonna matter. The trade's still slightly in favor of Rue Legends here. Knotson, the last hope to try and close this one off in the round, a 1v2 situation vase and treak still up though and having the positional advantage of that bomb control could be enough to get the job done here Knotson is going to try to play this now as slowly as possible thankfully again it's that fast paced play style that leaves the player in the clutch plenty of time to close out plenty of time to analyze the situation and hopefully make as few mistakes as possible he'll take a very direct route over towards the b site to where the c4 is down are you legends of course are aware of this as well and no but eventually he needs to play into this. Treak will be directly on the angle here. So Knotson's not gonna have much of a chance. He needs to immediately spot him, take him out. Gets the first kill though, still has half of his HP to play with, but I think he missed Vice moving down the ramp. Vice doesn't look like he's gonna follow him through the connector though. So Knotson will be able to reset. Still over a minute to play here. And now it's gonna be down to the 1v1 Knotson for the fate of his team trying to secure this championship point here. But Rue Legends, one player left could decide their entire life in the grand finals, and it's going to be Vase here. Bomb control in his hands, but Knotson, such a deadly player in these 1v1s. Vase has to be careful. He does have the HP advantage to work with as well, but Rue Legends, they need this round more than anything right now to keep themselves alive and somehow try and fight their way back into it. Vase though playing so patiently, but he spots him, takes him down. What a shot there. And just like that, the potential of overtime now is on the table as Rue Legends still have some fight left. One more round, however, separates us from the tournament winning point and overtime on map number three. Will RU Legends finally be able to potentially put a map onto the board in overtime or are Black Dragons just gonna shut it down three to nothing over RUL? with an incredibly definitive playstyle, with an incredibly aggressive playstyle. Black Dragons have done seemingly the impossible now. With all the Chinese teams knocked out, only the Russians remain. They seem to have knocked them over, run them over, you could even say, with the one-sided nature this match has showed us so far. And only one more round is needed. Black Dragon's gonna go for a pinch onto the B site. Look, RU Legends have the wrong read on this. They think it's coming from mid. They don't really have a good presence established on this site, so they're gonna let the Black Dragons walk right in. This is a crucial mistake here. Black Dragons, the full execution coming in. Nades raining down in from above. Rue Legends nowhere near to respond just yet. Black Dragons already able to have safe position to get this bomb down. Vienna spots one on the flank. It's gonna be Drace though who catches them off guard. Rue Legends still with the chance to take this one into overtime. Right now though, Black Dragons still have the five on four on the post plan against them. They're gonna try and hold on here. Four players left to try and secure the tournament. Danimal takes down one, but Stray already gets one on the lurk. 
Black Dragon still trying to hold on. 20 seconds to do it here. Danimal and Natsen. The last hope of Danimal and Natsen. It's all on Natsen now. A 1v2. He has to try and hold on. Natsen, he's going to find one. Can he get the second here, though? Is he going to get it? No, it's not going to happen. Stray somehow takes it into overtime. The 1v1. It comes all down to the wire, but somehow, someway, Rue Legends, they're still alive here. What a fight. What a battle. And we do see the Russians continue it in overtime for map number three. It's been a very arduous process to see the Russians just absolutely bow down to Black Dragons on maps number one and two. But finally, they found their footing here in map three. And they want to take it the distance. They want to send this to a map four and map five if they can. They'll need to get through overtime first. Once again, it's two additional halves that'll be played at three rounds each. If the teams are still tied at the end of those three rounds, it goes to one final round, the golden round, to decide the winner. Otherwise, it's the first to four. Definitely a good time for them to step up here and now, but Rue Legends, the question is, will it be too late to find their way back into this series? They've played a much better map than what we saw out of the first two here so far on Ankara, but still, Black Dragons with that opportunity to close at 3-0 in overtime. And the raw aggression is what they need to be prepared for on the side of Rue Legends. Black Dragons, surely a team that's going to throw that right at them. But Rue Legends, they have a chance to control the pace here as they will be on the blacklist side to start off our overtime. So let's see how exactly Rue Legends try to play this at the beginning. Like we said, only three rounds on each half now. So not a whole lot of time to make your mark. But with how floppy the play style tended to be. On the two sides, I don't think one side is necessarily going to give either team a massive advantage here as the rounds were incredibly back and forth, unlike what we had been seeing from our previous maps where Black Dragons just constantly were shutting things down due to the heroic efforts of often just individual players. And even that held true moving on to this map. Will and ADRF both having ace rounds throughout the course of this map, which aces alone have been a very rare sight in this tournament. You see two in one map. That's impressive. Fortunately, Black Dragons overextend their hand. ADRF jumps into a 1v3, giving himself away and giving RUL a 5v4 opener. And right now, Rue Legends, a chance to take the lead here in overtime, potentially to push us into a fourth map situation. But Black Dragons, they still see that 3-0 possibility here. They're going to try and hold things off. They do have a nice stack here over towards the B-bomb side. A lot of control in their hands still, even though it is a four on five situation. Natsen and Will, very deadly players on these holds. We'll see if they can be equally viable on this defensive half so far. Danimal may run into some trouble here though. Stray sneaking up to the mid windows here with Vase. They're gonna try and find another pick for Rue Legends. Danimal though, going to be spotted there from Vase. No secure frags either way. Vienna though goes down. Will able to trade out, finds himself one on the lurk. Treak. It's another one on the board, but Danimal still alive and able to find this one. Two on three situation now, and Rue Legends still able to get this bomb down just in time. 2v3 is the way that the Black Dragons are going to have to move in for their retake. Danimal and Knotson both working their way in from separate angles. Knotson more towards GR spawn. Danimal trying to work his way back in from long. Danimal isn't noticed either. He's able to walk directly up. Fires a little bit too soon, though. Gives away his position, and it's been a very messy spot. Where is his teammate, though? There's no re-aggression that comes out from his teammate. And as such, it's a very easy closeout. Now it will be Root Legends in the lead here, something we haven't really seen much of in this matchup so far. But now, more than ever, this is their chance to bring it back, take it to map four, and somehow keep the dream alive of potentially bringing a full comeback into fruition here. We'll see if it can happen, though, right now. It's got to start with another solid round on the board, Black Dragons. Still with a chance to tie things up right away here in overtime. They're going to be playing again with three towards the speed bomb site right now. A lot of pressure coming out in mid from New Legends, but still no frags to connect just yet. Stray just pre-firing everything at the moment. Just trying to see if he can catch anyone from Black Dragons off guard at the beginning of the round. Unfortunately, Black Dragons is not able to find impact necessary on that previous round to shut down the RUL push. But it's going to be a lot more passive from the Black Dragons now. All their players spread out amongst course of the map and no one trying to get aggressive anymore. Closest thing to that would be Will. But he's still in a relatively safe spot around the corner in mid. Waiting for the eventual push to come in from RUL. Treak looking to find his way into an early pick for his team. We'll see if he can find one here. Black Dragons though playing incredibly patient here but a nice lag shot comes down onto Will from Treak. We'll see if that's enough though to find an opening right now. 
It is down to a minute left on the clock to get this bomb planted, so they need to start moving quickly here and try and find some sort of control on this map. It looks like they're going to try and force their way up into mid tree. Looking for an opening over towards A. It's going to be a potential A split, but ADRF, he gets the double kill shutdown straight, able to trade out, but it's not going to matter. Will, there with the response, Excuer finds one onto the A bomb site. 3v2 now. Black Dragons still looking to try and stall this one out, but it's going to be Rue Legends with an opportunity to plant the bomb now. Treek incredibly aggressive as he moves his way out. Excuer does the same too. He'll find himself eliminated as a result of that. It's going to be Treek left alone now. A 1v3, but set against him. 35 seconds until we see the bomb explode, and now Black Dragons will move, and they just have to hunt down Treek's position. He's remaining mobile, which is good, considering what he's up against here. He's moved himself all the way outside of the site. Or plays Animal, no, walks right in, gets a first kill because of it. A second as well, but Danimal on the top side will shut him down. We will see rounds traded out one for one. This is the way overtime will start now. Almost a shaky round there, but still Black Dragons, they can close this one out. They've got everything on their side now once again to do so. But Rue Legends making this one very, very difficult for them to do. They finally stepped up here in map number three, but still it could be too late for the comeback. If they're not careful, Black Dragons starting to heat up once again. Now in this overtime situation, Treek, he had a nice attempt there, but it wasn't enough to make it happen. And now we'll see if Black Dragons can take the lead back or if Rue Legends will try and stay on top here. Well, Rue Legends are gonna work their way over very quickly as well towards mid. Try to push their way into the B site from there. They're leaving the options open though. As you can see, Drace and some of the others still sitting back with a connector. What he could potentially see a push work its way out. But for Rue Legends, they do creep their way forward out over towards B long as well. The potential execute opening itself up to there. It's the first split we're going to see in quite a long time from Rue Legends. It's going to take a while, of course, for it to build up, which means they are going to be executing a little bit lower time or something we haven't really been seeing a whole lot of throughout the course of this series just due to how fast paced both these teams have been really forced to play into. Black Dragons, though, really wanting to grasp onto this round. It would mean they lead at the half going into our second half of overtime. We do have Rue Legends, though, starting to group for the attack here over towards B. They've got two players to potentially split out of mid as well, and could be the right call here. Black Dragons, only two players really to try and stall this one out. It's going to be ADRF in Vienna, though. But ADRF gets the opener here, a great way to get things started. Now the pressure is going to come in from Rue Legends, trying to find the trades. Not going to happen, though. ADRF picks off another. It's going to be Vienna. Running into trouble over towards B. ADRF will finally go down here, but Vienna with a chance to hold on, but it's not gonna matter. Rue Legends, they turn this one around completely, and it's already down to a two on three. Drace and Excure, though, both very low, and the bomb will be planted on B. Now a full retake here for Danimal and Knotson, but a very winnable 2v3. Danimal taking a little bit of fall damage, unfortunately, as he retreated from the other site, and that's gonna knock out about a third of his HP for the retake. Certainly not what he needed to play off of. Move himself over into the site, finds a strong opener. No damage taken at all in that battle. Knotson does pretty much the same. It's down to Treek now on the arm. He's going to be able to find one with the pistol, though. Bringing it into a 1v1 to close out, but the missed shot sends the round into the Black Dragon's favor. And now they are two rounds away from closing out the tournament. And you can see the frustration after losing that 1v1 duel. Not looking too happy on the side of Rue Legends right now. They know this is their sort of last chance at this point to bring it all the way back, and they have to start here. And now it's still not over just yet. There is time to recover here as we go into the second half of overtime, but a lot of work left to be done, and it could just be the end of the road here if Black Dragons finds two more rounds, which is all they need going into the second half. Well, the second half will be getting started incredibly soon, folks. Rue Legends don't have a whole lot of time to think about how they want to play their global risk side. It needs to be swift and it needs to be dominant for them. They need at least two of these rounds to guarantee the golden round if they still want an opportunity to close out this map and keep this grand final rolling. Otherwise, it's going to be all Black Dragons and they'll take all the money that comes with it along with a trophy still sitting in the middle of the stage. Let's get into it though. Black Dragons now on the attack on Blacklist. Rue Legends on the defense. Black Dragons looking to try and end this one as it started with them on top and steamrolling their way through here. But right now, they are going to try and work their way up mid. They need to be careful, though. Blue Legends be pushing out of B to try and get some information. Two players already very forward here outside of Hotel. It's going to be Drace just around the corner there, playing off of Excuer's position to try and find the opening frag. But right now, Black Dragons 
They've got a huge opening in mid. If they can find a way to take down Treek early here, they could have full control of B. Treek, his position, his position is going to be exposed as well here. Vienna knows exactly where he is based on that shot. Black Dragons, though, taking their time, playing this one safely. They know exactly what's at stake here. So the push coming in now. Oh, and a spot early on goes via the way of Black Dragons. Treek with a no-scope at the big window, though. Will he be able to survive is the question. He's being forced out relatively quickly. He's down to 34 HP. Nades going in and connecting quite efficiently as well. Stray's most recent pick brings the Black Dragons down another player into a two versus four now as Excuers found the most recent pick up. Danimal and Will left into a clutch situation as unfortunately the push in mid does not go Black Dragons' way. If there's anyone you want though to try and turn things around, it's surely Will and Danimal in this situation. Will so good at finding the numbers when they need them, but Vase able to sneak right past him. That could be enough, but Danimal checks the corner somehow. They find the kill there, exactly what they needed to try and keep things alive in this round. Danimal though, very low on HP after that engage. Will has to be the superstar here, and this one finds a brilliant headshot though. Treek very low as well. It's still a winnable round. Excuer able to find one. It's all on Danimal now. 1v2 situation, he'll find the first here though. Treek has to try and pull out here, but it's going to be the bomb down. He has to try and get this plant. Danimal only 30 seconds to make this happen. Treek going to be pretty far out though, rotating very quickly to try and get in position. Fortunately, he's got the wrong read about the position right now. Just trying to check every position possible. Treek as well, a little bit unsure about the way he wants to play. There's 18 seconds left. And Danimal's gonna try to make a mad dash over to the B site. This, is, this should be caught by Treek. He's gonna be moving up to the window. Danimal inside of the window. Now he's gonna go for the kill. He doesn't have time left to get over to the site anymore. Misses him at the window opportunity. He'll go to the inside. He's gonna run the timer. No, no, a peek at the last second. Gives the round over to RU Legends. And they tie it up at two to two. And just when you think it's over, RU Legends find a way to keep the fight alive. And somehow, they could take this one all the way into map number four. Two rounds away from either team making that happen. If it goes one each way, we are going to be going into a golden round situation on a potential championship point golden round. Would be an insane way to see this one come down to the wire. But right now, Black Dragons still need to try and find a round yet to try and make this one happen. Not having quite as much success here on their blacklist half as we might have expected them to. Rue Legends, though, stepping it up and trying to keep that last bit of hope alive to keep themselves in this grand final. Nice counter flash comes out over the top of A-Long. It's going to be a lot of pressure onto these two players trying to push out Excure and Stray. Both take half HP worth of damage, but Stray able to find one before going down, but that's not going to be enough. It's a three-for-one trade, and right now Black Dragons have full control over the round. Treek and Vase are going to be the last two left standing for RU Legends to try and bring this round back under their control. They do throw even more aggression out over at the A-Long angle. Exactly where three of their teammates had just fallen. Treek with a good adjustment. Unfortunately, the arm shot's just not connecting where he needs them to. He's going to end up getting oh, outwitted by Will in a very fast push right up to his face, leaving just Vase in a one versus four to try and keep Black Dragons off of map point now. The one v four, though, it will be down to the wire. As the bomb gets planted here, he has to be careful. Vase in a nice position to potentially catch some rotations off guard, but still, he has a lot to do to recover this round. The bomb being planted doesn't help, but Vase, another big shot here. This could be it. Enough to make it happen. The 1v2 full HP as well on the retake. Has to be careful though. Danimal jumps across right in front. And Black Dragons once again find themselves with a chance at victory here. This could be it. Three chances were there before, however, and they were unable to close out now. Only one opportunity before RU Legends tie it up and we go to the golden round where either team has the potential to close out this map. And for Black Dragons, of course, the tournament as well. Slow start for the Black Dragons. They will be held back. It seems at the very minimum, RU Legends has done a good job of forcing Black Dragons away from that incredibly aggressive play style that we were seeing at the beginning of the series. They'll split themselves up. They've got Will trying to lurk himself over towards the long entry on B. There's a lot of presses established there from RU Legends. Same can be said for the gates today, though. So Black Dragons are going to have to be careful with where they throw their weight on this round. So RU Legends are going to be there every step of the way. And now with everything on the line here, Black Dragons look to potentially take this one over towards A. They're gonna leave Will to lurk over towards B, but right now, this A execution has to be flawless. Stray playing in the vents, finds the opener here, but will it be enough to hold them off? Stray finds two before going down, and it's down to a three on four situation, making a four on two, as now Will and Danimal 
are left to try and claw back once again. Danimal finds one, but he needs more than that to make the impact necessary to take this one away. Danimal, he's going to try and sneak out here, but the rotations are already coming through here. Will has to be the one to make the big play here. Both players now rotating their way over towards B, but there's going to be a player lurking in the shadows here. Drace spots them on the cross long. And this is where they may have to take an unfavorable fight here. Will and Danimal, they still try and sneak away here, trying to get this one all the way back to B, and they will have the opening now to do so. Unfortunately, still going to be outnumbered and still be in a losing position in this battle in terms of the way that they're approaching it from an HP perspective as well. But they've got Danimal alive. When you look at the kills, he's easily been the most impactful player in overtime now for the Black Dragons at 7-1 just on this half alone. He's been an absolute monster here. If they close out, we'll certainly be talking a lot about him when we go back to the desk. Plant will go onto the ground. RU Legends seem to originally want to try and push their way through Connector relatively quickly. But it's Drace that'll be forced away after some delay. Now the rest of the team left to move in. Danimal as well, trying to hide in the smoke, trying to cut these guys off in an unorthodox position. While his teammate takes the fray, there is one start from Danimal. His opponent will go into the hallway. Will will jump back in and take the fight, but he's going to be cut off on the flank dangle. Danimal tries to put himself into a better position, but it will not work out. RUL tie it up again. And we go to the golden round to settle this map. And this is quite the intense way for this to potentially end. Golden round as potential championship point here for Black Dragons if they can find a way to win it. It would be an incredible way to bring this one to a close. But for Rue Legends, it's one step forward into bringing this match back into their hands and the potential to rise up and basically mount an incredible comeback. Everything was against them in the first two maps, but now on map number three, they're finally starting to come to life. But in this golden round, the question now will be answered if it's too late or if there's some hope for Rue Legends to push forward here. Not much of a need for a delay before we get ourselves into it. So we should be jumping back into the map in just a second for one final round to be played out between these two teams that the Black Dragons take it. It's the end of the event. And they will be crowned the champions of CFS 2018 to be the first non-Chinese champion of CFS history. For RU Legends, they're still fighting for that honor as well. They've got a long way to go to close out here. Where will they be the beginning? But now it needs to be an additional two map run from them. And we'll see what they have in store for us in the golden round. But it looks like we are going to see a full execution already mounting towards the A bomb site. Stray going to be spotted. Black Dragons, they want to go right in here. This could be a fast paced way to potentially close it, or it will be a full utility fake. Right now, two players are going to start falling off for the side of Black Dragons. We'll see if they decide to fall off here and potentially rotate all the way back towards B. For the first time in the entire series, we're seeing hesitation from the Black Dragons. They're unsure about their execute into the A site. Normally, they'd be fine to push that smoke. They'd be all right to just rush right into the site. And they've got the opportunity to do it. The heavy stack from RU Legends, it's not here. It's over on the other site. If there was ever a time to breach into A, it's going to be now before these players realize what exactly is happening. There's the flash. It forces Stray out. Stray doesn't want to risk himself early on. Treek, however, is able to find impact as the second player in this site. He's got a great position, actually, from the top side. Stray holds his own two before we finally see a trade from Danimal. A 3v4 will now be the name of the retake here. Here we have it. Rue Legends looking to hold on here and take this one all the way into map number four. But Black Dragons, this is their chance. Championship point on the line in this golden round. The question is, can they close it here? Rue Legends, though, they have the numbers on their side. The utility rains down from above, but every single player is coming in from the Global Risk spawn. They funnel in, hoping no shutdown will come their way. But Excuer, he doesn't check the corner. Knotson gets the double kill. It's going to be Excuer, though, finding two. It's down to the 2v1. Vienna, can he do it? He makes it happen. The golden round. And Black Dragons are your world champions here. An incredible way to end it. The golden round. Vienna, the 1v2 clutch down to the wire, but Black Dragons still shine through, and they take the 3-0 sweep. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, your 2018 Crossfire Stars champions. It's Black Dragons! Incredible performance all around, really. I mean, just both teams playing phenomenally. Rude Legends can't sell them short, obviously. They worked so hard to get here, but at the end of the day, Black Dragons, they get it done.
Ladies and gentlemen, ADRF knots in Vienna, Will, and Danimal. Remember those names. They are the CFS 2018 Crossfire World Champions, and they are Black Dragons! Ladies and gentlemen, your new world champions, the Black Dragons. How does that sound, Will? You're now the world champions. Um, we are very happy. We don't have words to this moment. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, our Chinese fans. Thank you, our Brazilian fans. Thank you, our fans around the world. And China, I love you, Waini! Liu Liu Liu, Liu Liu Liu! <laughs> we talked three days ago at Tai Chang during the group stages and the quarterfinals and the semifinals. When you won that semifinal, I know you're confident. I know you Brazilian players, you always believe you can do it. You've actually done it now you are the champions of the world have you got any words you want to say to are you legends uh, i can speak portuguese oh. um i i only have to say thank you because they are they are, they are champions too because uh, they play very well this final to 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 come here it's very difficult and they play very well and thank you real legends thank you commiserations but also congratulations to RU legends the runners up in the world championship after their incredible performance well i know you want to say something to your brazilian fans fala aí rapaziada o trem bala ganhou a gente está na China dominando. Tamo junto, rapaziada. Muito obrigado a todo mundo que torceu. Avisa aqui. Ai, rapaziada, tem stream quando... Tem live, tem live, hein? Ó, oh, não. Mas muito obrigado a todo mundo. Rapaziada que tá narrando. Rapaziada que tá assistindo. Os nossos pais. Todos os pais da minha família. Viana, Dani, Noti, Adriano. As namoradas da rapaziada. E, mano, todo mundo, os amigos. Muito obrigado. A gente treinou muito para estar nesse momento. E eu acho que o único sentimento que a gente tem é de alívio, porque a gente se dedicou o ano inteiro para isso, tá ligado? Muito obrigado a todo mundo que torceu e é isso. Go BD. Muito obrigado, Will. Muito obrigado, Black Dragons, the new Crossfire World Champions. We'll go back to our commentators and let's talk a little bit more about that incredible match before we welcome our finalists back to the stage. Well, ladies and gentlemen, did you ever think that you would see the day that the Brazilian flag is draped over that beautiful trophy? What an absolutely incredible moment, and what a way to finish it. Golden round. You cannot think of anything better. Just an incredible fashion to see this one end, and a historic moment as well for the Brazilian crossfire scene. They just had an incredible showing across both teams in this entire event and really established them as the new dominant scene in Crossfire moving forward here. But a huge congratulations to the other two teams that showed up today. I mean, Rue Legends getting second place, a big accomplishment for them as well. And obviously SV, they were able to pull off earlier with that third place as the reigning world champions. They do fall here today, but Black Dragons, they should proudly wear that crown, at least for now. And with such a new definitive play style they bring to the table as well, just raw aggression being thrown across the table in every 
every single avenue of all three maps. Finally, we're forced to play a little bit more passively on the third map as we saw RU Legends start to pick up more consistent rounds. Whenever they can push the pressure, whenever they can push the envelope and really try to restrict any movement whatsoever from RU Legends, they did it, and almost every single time it was successful. Look, to be honest, I'm so glad that that third map went in the style that it did. RU Legends deserved more than what we saw in those first two maps. Clearly, they were a better team than what they brought to the table. Maybe it was nerves, maybe it was that momentum, maybe it was the way that Black Dragons played, that incredible new play style that we saw out of them bursting out of the gate and doing so with style 10-2. 10-4, the first two maps. I was wondering, are they going to follow it up with the 10 or 6? No, we go to overtime. We go to golden round. And the thing for me is the amount of dedication, the way that RU Legends dealt with the pressure. They worked through four championship points that they won before they ended up losing. That The amount of pressure that they must have been under there to win those 1v1s, to come out, and even though they didn't win in the end, they really proved themselves today. Yeah, we have to give them respect for not rolling over when things look tough. They tried to fight back in down to the bitter end, but unfortunately at the end of the day, it just wasn't quite enough to push it into map number four. But still, it was I was glad to see them put up a huge fight at the end just to try and make it close even at the end. Yeah, for me, again, the big highlight, if we look at it from an individual perspective, it's got to be Will once again wow, showing yeah. up in this final map. Him and ADRF, easily the two most highlightable players in this series, especially on that third map. Within the course of about three rounds, two of them had aces, almost back to back. So some incredible stuff coming out from them. And from that point forward, it really just looked like they were in full control of the matchup. Props to RU Legends for continuing to fight back even after such one-sided performances where single players were dominating the other team. But at the end of the day, it just wasn't enough. It really does uh, throw, show true strength of will, I think, to be able to come back in those situations when all seems lost, even if in the end you can't win. It doesn't matter. You do your best, and I think that's what we saw from RU Legends today. But for Brazil, for Brazilian fans, what an amazing day. What an amazing achievement for you and your community for Crossfire in Brazil to get a team in first place, to get a team still come into fourth place, fourth place, which was up until then where you would normally expect at best a Brazilian team to come. And they've clearly shown us this week that we should expect far more from them in the future. Yeah, in the future, they have now stapled themselves as the region to beat and looking ahead to future events. Everyone needs to be looking out for Black Dragons. After a grand final like that, I feel like any team in the world is scared of them at this point. As they should be, Blue. Yeah, very much the case, especially with that kind of play style. They're going to bring that to regular tournaments as well. Even in group play stages, even online tournaments, they are truly going to be a force to be reckoned with if they can bring that aggressive of a play style to a grand final such as this. It's been an incredible week so far. 16 teams came to China for the CR, oh, sorry, the CFS 2018. <laughs> Getting, getting this long day here, boys. The CFS 2018 Crossfire Championships. We also had Crossfire Legends. We'll be having the finals of that a little bit later on this evening. And Crossfire HD as well, which really was a spectacle. The show that has been put on here, both in Taichang and in Nanjing, has actually been amazing. It really has. I mean, throughout the entirety of this week, we've seen a lot of incredible things. And we started the finals off with an incredible stage show as well, just lighting up the entire arena. And even the Chinese fans got a nice taste of SV walking away with that third place. But at the end of the day, this has to be the shining moment so far. I mean, Black Dragons lifting that trophy the first time in so long anyone outside of China has been able to make something happen here. For the first time in CFS history, a team walks away outside of the region and lifts that trophy, and you can see it on their faces. They're just so proud that they were the first region to conquer China. Yeah, very much the case as we see Brazil finally showing up on top. We yeah. talked about this plenty as well, but Brazil, they're the new kings, and they proved it once again, nearly even taking down SV in the, in the other final as well in our third place match, taking that match the distance, and <laughs> overtime on two maps overall. Brazil is truly the force to be reckoned with, and we can see this man as well. We didn't actually get to talk a whole lot about it. Yeah. Danimal, who in overtime pretty much single-handedly was able to keep the Black Dragons in quite a few of their rounds that they were on the losing side of. For me, uh, the incredible thing about what Brazil has done here is not just that they've managed to get the first team to be the CFS champion, the first time that we've had a, a competition where there hasn't been a Chinese team in the grand final, but they had two teams that could have been there so very close. It's, it's amazing to do one, but two is just almost unthinkable. Yeah, it really is. Just an incredible performance overall. But Black Dragons, when you look at their history, 
They were the team to make this happen. They were the first team back in Vietnam in 2017 to win an Invitational, and now at CFS, they do it once again on the biggest stage in the world and really show everyone why they are one of the best teams in all of Crossfire. What have been some of your highlights this week, Blue? There's been a lot going on. Has it been the arena? Has it been the games? What have you thought? I, th I think, I, for me, the, the biggest highlight was that intro show. That's probably one of the coolest in yeah. intro shows to an eSports show I've ever seen. And that was really, really cool to see. That was the highlight for me, as well seeing the third place match, finally seeing the, seeing the Chinese fans getting something here in the big arena to cheer about. That was also a whole lot of fun. So what's the future now, do you think, Kyle? We've got these teams from around the world who are taking it to China, taking it to the best. We have RU Legends who almost made it through as the champions. We have teams from Brazil who are clearly showing that they are here and ready to fight. I mean, I think the biggest thing next is now China realizes they aren't the powerhouse they thought they were anymore. And I think they're going to come back in future seasons even stronger looking ahead. They could be coming back full force in the next year's events. But right now, Brazil is going to be the teams that everyone studies across the board, especially Black Dragons, putting on stellar performances with just a, an aggressive playstyle we really haven't seen the likes of for a long time. Yeah, it really is a very exciting future looking forward for Crossfire here, Blue. Yeah, it's certainly going to be interesting to see how other regions try to evolve and try to catch yeah. up to this now, as not only is it going to, you know, not only has this crown Brazil as king, some of the other regions that are looking at this is like, okay, the Chinese teams, they can be beaten, they can be knocked out. They're looking a little weak right now. So I'm imagining that a whole lot of regions are going to be putting work into preparing themselves for the next international event and trying to have just as strong a performance as Brazil did in CFS here. I think the great thing is that we spoke about at the start of the tournament how the Black Dragons were the team to beat the Chinese. They had the strats, they had the different play style, maybe they were the kryptonite. But at the end of the day, it wasn't even all about the Chinese. It was about everyone else. And really, that's quite remarkable. They showed they weren't just strong against some of the top teams in the world from the Chinese region. They somehow knew how to beat everyone else as well. Yeah, I mean, they really just put in all this unpredictability. Both Brazilian teams brought out so many nuanced tactics and strategies that no one had any clue how to deal with a lot of them. They were just constantly steamrolling their opponents. I mean, even looking at INTZ, nobody expected anything from them really either looking at their group, and they came out stronger than ever out of their group, looking very confident going into those quarterfinals and ultimately getting all the way to that third place match. And I, I think in itself, Brazil really showed up in a big way here and proved everyone wrong. Yeah, INTZ, that team who maybe we underestimated as well at the start of the competition, they actually took Super Valiant Gaming incredibly close to defeat in a best of three, something you don't see very often. No, something you don't see very often at all. It seems like it was a little bit more common at this event, obviously, with yeah. them having the struggles they did, but taking them to overtime two times in a row, map number two, winning map number two as well after dropping, uh, or, or excuse me, yeah, after taking control of the first map there, and then barely, just barely, just barely falling and letting the Chinese take it. So it's certainly going to be fun to see next year. Well, the time we've been waiting for, it's time for the award ceremony. Let's head across. Tested. Let's now welcome back to the stage the fourth place team of the CFS 2018 Crossfire Tournament, and they are INTZ Esports Club. Shu, the general manager of the K1 Cooperation Department of Tencent Games, who will take the honor of presenting the award. Ladies and gentlemen, our fourth place team from Brazil, INTZ Esports Club. And now, please welcome our third place team, representing China, your S. 
V Super Valiant Gaming! invite Graham Chu to again have the honor of presenting the award to our third place team. Legends of the game, the two-time world champions, they are Super Valiant Gaming! And now we welcome back to the stage, the runner up of our tournament. We welcome back, are you legends? their award, please welcome Ina Jang, the CEO of Smilegate Entertainment, who has the honor of presenting their award. From Russia, the runners up are you legends! And finally, live to you in Nanyang, we welcome back the new CFS 2018 Crossfire World Champions. Black Dragons! Welcome back, Ina Jang, to present their award. Ladies and gentlemen, the new world champion! And now let's have all of our teams back to the center of the stage to commemorate this incredible competition. Ladies and gentlemen, our top four teams, our special guests, and our world champions, the Black Dragons!
We will be back shortly with the CFS 2018 Crossfire Legends Grand Final. So please don't go anywhere. The Grand Final will be upon us next. But once again, our congratulations to all these incredible teams for the CFS 2018 Crossfire Championship.